Like everything you learned at Bold, just like get rid of it. Like nobody <laughs> wants to hear that. Nobody wants to be like sold like that anymore. And Welcome to the Real Estate Rundown. If being a realtor was so easy, why do 87% of them fail? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this question was posed by Chris Smith. Uh, we love Chris Smith, a curator. He has the Conversion Code book. It's an amazing book. Uh, but it is a question worth diving into, especially as we talk about commissions and everything that's happening. And there's breaking news today that... The NAR settlement was approved by the judge in the Setzer Burnett case, uh, and they're setting a final hearing in November. So changes are coming, and I think this question is worth discussing. If it was so easy, and if we were so overpaid, why do so many realtors fail? Great question. It really is. Because it's not easy. Well, because <laughs> it's because it's not Is that easy. The, that's the simple answer. It's not <laughs> easy. Answer. Well, I, I think it comes down to acquiring business, right? At the end of the day, you are a 1099 independent contractor for 99 percent of the real estate companies out there. And at the end of the day, you have to go out there and find your own business, your own clientele to serve and support so that you can earn paychecks. That's what most agents don't realize that. They're like, they are now a realtor. All right, woohoo, I'm going to make millions. Yep. And then they're like, money's going to rain. Where are they coming? Where, no one's calling me. What's going on? <laughs> like, why, <laughs> why am I not getting any deals here? Uh, my no. broker is not giving me deals. Like, yeah. why, why are you, you know, give me some, give me some, uh, some clients here. Yeah. And they, then they quickly realize like, oh, that's the hard part. Like, I actually... Gotta oh, get, I got to build a business clients and get people to come to me and call me and say, I need, I need to, you know, I want to use you as a realtor. But I think, I think a lot, a lot of it is, is it's a lot of why a lot of people fail is because they're, it, the barrier of entry is just so low, mm. you know? So I mean, yeah. 90 hours, it's, I mean, anyone can go get their license and a lot of people do, they just go like, Hey, I'm just, I'm bored and I'm just gonna get my license and become a realtor and maybe sell one or two houses and see, see how I like it. You know, so they, they, they dip their toe in into the into the industry rather than going like, hey, I'm going to be a realtor and this is what I'm yes. doing and that's it. But I wonder if some of the best realtors out there are the ones that just said, hey, I want to try this. I want to dip my toe in. And they dipped their toe and they loved it. Yeah. It was so like, then they jumped right on in. So I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing because no, I definitely not think. At all. I don't think so either. No. There's people that have a bridge, right? There's teachers. um, you know, that's one of my favorite ones where a lot of teachers actually end up having a lot of success in the real estate industry because they, I think they understand like process. They understand, you know, putting a, something of value together that they can communicate clearly with their audience. And so when they do that, a lot of times I think that that's what will attract new clients for them. I, I think teachers are good because they educate and yeah. they don't sell. Yeah. That's, and I, and yeah. I think that like we're in a world where like nobody wants to be sold. Mm but everybody has something to sell. Yeah. <laughs> everybody yeah. wants to buy. Nobody wants to be sold. Well, and I think it's also because they don't make crap. And like when they, once they make their first paycheck, they're like, wow, like I can do that four or five times and make four or five times more money than I did <laughs> teaching. Yeah. Sell three houses so, and same, same money they made as a but teacher. But I agree. I think, I think they, uh, I think they, they do so well because they, they teach people, they teach people how to do things and they, they regurgitate and they go, okay, this is how you do it. And instead of trying to sell somebody, they uh, educate them and they end up buying a house or selling selling a house. So I met one of our uh, local top producers, and she's like an influencer on Instagram, a really cool account. It's moving to Arizona, and she just gets like tens of thousands of views on all wow. her videos. And she's been in real estate for seven years. And one of the things that she said to me is that her clients are always so grateful that she's not pushy, she's not salesy, and she mm. said it is a common theme with everybody she works with. They tell her, like, I'm so grateful that you weren't salesy, that you weren't pushy. And I know we talked about this last week a little, but I definitely think that, like, as an industry, we need to, like, give up our script books. Like, everything you learned at Bold, just, like, get rid of it. Like, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to be, like, sold like that anymore. And did they ever, I don't know, was it effective? Yes. Are there great scripts? Of course. Yep. But I think that the more we can just like talk to somebody like they're a human. And if you struggle to put these terms in like normal, relatable ways, then that's what you should work on. You shouldn't go find a script where you're like regurgitating, you know, salesy 
junk to go throw up on people. Nobody wants that. I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. If I go like, you know, and oh, have an experience with somebody in sales. Yeah, I can't stand it. Yeah, I can't stand I can tell it. they're reading a script. I'm like, click. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> like, this is yeah. not good. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know, you talk to enough people. Yeah. Maybe Strength works, in numbers. But, uh, it doesn't work for me. That's for sure. Well, okay. So let's go back to why agents fail. I, I guess I'll kind of take a first stab at it. So as I was stating, when they all get their license, I think that they think business is just automatically going to happen for them. <laughs> you get your real estate license and mom, dad, sister, uncle, friends, everybody's going to know that you're now a licensed agent. One of my favorite things I used to always heard about when I got started in the business is don't be a secret agent. Right. And so that number one, you need to let people know what it is that you can potentially bring and what problems I think that you're solving in the marketplace. I think when you do lead from education, that's where you, that does remove the, 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 the actual sales. Right. You're providing information on an opportunity. And when somebody wants to choose into that opportunity that, that, that you are the catalyst for, therefore, it is not a sale. It's a buy on their part, right? They're buying your information. They're buying what you're putting down, right? There's many levels of buying. And I think that that whole process gets lost on so many agents. And here's the last thing and before I, I hand it off to you guys, you have to be careful in the brokerage that, that you start with, right? I think that they, they carry a heavy influence on the start of not only your work ethic, what your structure should be look like, you know, really what is that starting line going to look like for you and your real estate business? And if you don't have a proper mentor, a broker or a team leader, et cetera, that has truly created some awesome results, then more times than not, how are you going to learn from them if they haven't created what you want? Have you heard the saying, those who can't do teach? <laughs> Yes, I've do you th do you think that there are a lot of those people that you just mentioned, brokers, team leaders, that really couldn't do it themselves, and so Absolutely. now they're teaching? Absolutely, I've seen yeah. it many times. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's it's interesting. I mean, I think another reason why agents fail is because they don't they f they they don't realize that it's going to take longer to make money mm. than they think. <laughs> And so yeah. they don't have sufficient income to carry them forward. So valid, right? Like, because even day one, you get your real estate license. Even if you have a buyer day one, you're looking at probably 60 days before you have a paycheck. Absolutely. And that's assuming you have a client all day goes one. goes well. Yeah. And most don't, right? right? And of course not. Like you just started, you got to like build that. So I think that that could be a reason why, why a lot of realtors fail. But I think the 87% statistic that it, it was an, an NAR stat, uh, and it's, it's been widely circulated for like eons, that yeah. number. And it's like never really changed. They always say that it's the same and it's within the first five years. So this isn't like a you know, 87% dropout year one. I think that's more like 75% dropout year one. But then as the years go on, obviously it increases. And maybe that's because they have like a good year or good 18 months or 24 months. Like, could mm -hmm. you imagine if you got your, your real estate <laughs> license, like in 2020, mm. you probably had a phenomenal oh, first yeah. couple of years in oh, real yeah. estate and you probably felt like a rock star. And then maybe now you're going like, whoa, wait, what happened? Like that, it's, it's not raining buyers and sellers outside anymore. Like, what do I do? So I think that could be why is they fail to realize how long it takes to build that business. Yeah. I remember when you used to go on the board and teach agents when brand, brand new agents, when we were recruiting a bunch of agents, you would go and like put everyone's name on there and then you start crossing out like nine, nine out of like, really 20 yeah, people. Like nine. Cross out like 18 people and be like, you know, this, you know what this is? This is like, these are the two people or this, there's only going to be two people that actually succeed in five yeah. years. They're actually going to still be in the business in five years. Do you want to be that person? That's the other thing. Yeah. That was always, I always felt so mean, like crossing people's names <laughs> off. <laughs> it would just be random, but yeah, it was such a, that was such a powerful exercise. And I could like literally look out at everybody and you could see that they were just like, like whoa, whoa, that's a lot of people it, that you are know, it's not in the business and it, and it comes true. Right. You know, you mentioned, um, money. I think that that's actually another huge one because there's a lot of people that, yes, you can hit your database, but I mean, there's a lot of CRMs, leads, 
uh, marketing material? How are you going to actually communicate that value, right? Are you going to have ad spend? Are you like, there's so many skill sets that are actually underappreciated in the real estate industry. When you take like a really actually like good top performer, if you look at the skill set that they have, they could go get a job in about eight different industries at like mid level or higher, right? With, with usually the skill set that they have. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, we wear many hats yes. as realtors and in, you know, unless you have a large team, if you're fortunate to have that segmentation, uh, generally you're doing it all. Mm -hmm. You're, you're doing all of the things you're, you know, you're, you're the chief strategy officer. You're the COO, <laughs> you're the CFO, you're the CEO, you're the receptionist. You are the, the psychologist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the there's ther a big one. Therapist. There's, yeah. yeah. There's the under understated value of, yeah. of, of an agent. I don't think people therapy. realize <laughs> how much crap that, that an agent actually listens to from clients. Like there are some clients that just tell way too much about themselves and it's like, wow, like I did not sign up to, you know, go over all your life problems and Oh gosh. Especially like uh, in divorce situations. Oof. I've dealt with a yeah. ton of those. Oh yeah, having to deal with each each client or oh. each, you know, the the husband and wife that are getting divorced and and they want to complain about the other person and the other person's complaining. They they try to get you on each side and like and you're just like, Oh my gosh, this is this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> like that's why I'm making totally. the big bucks, right? <laughs> and, well, let's be real. I mean, a lot of times selling your home, moving, buying a new home, all of that is emotional. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and there's a lot of times, like, th let's think about it even just from, like, an inspection standpoint. I think that that's where it's probably the most underappreciated piece in, in the transaction. I mean, yes, finding the home. Yes, articulating, you know, opportunities and speaking about the deal, et cetera. Those are all those things. But there's so many times in a negotiation that deals blow up and go sideways in the inspection. And it's because egos, misunderstanding, I'm right, they're right, or, mm. you know, really just kind of gets in the way. And I think that a true practitioner knows how to navigate, you know, those egos. Because sometimes that's exactly what it is. You got to like table that seller. I'm not doing this. This is insulting Right. We've all yeah, had those if you conversations. Were to, if you were to go back to the buyer or the buyer's agent and tell, say everything what the seller said about the buyer, <laughs> you'd probably blow up so many, so many transactions. But yeah, yeah I think, it, I think, um, you know, being a filter for um, your client is really what, what needs to happen. Right. Preserve the deal. Yeah, Preserve absolutely. Deal. Well, and even yeah. giving them that advice, like, hey, this isn't that bad. I know that you're, you know, you don't want to give a credit of, you know, X number of dollars here and for, because your pool pump is blown out, for example, or the water heater's bad or whatever, right? You do realize that if we lose this buyer, A, you're going to have to still remedy the problem. You're paying more for the property, you know, in interest, et cetera. And then not to mention, hey, what if we don't find another buyer because it's now 45 days more and the new buyer thinks it's contaminated and they're going to come in and try to negotiate a better deal? Mm. Yeah. Which leads me to the thought, and I saw this new AI real estate company. Mm. It's called Meet Joy oh. AI. And <laughs> what it is, is it's an AI real estate agent. They're claiming it's the first ever, but I've seen, I've seen these before. So it's not, it's definitely not the first ever, Yeah, <laughs> but it's interesting. And they talk about how you can use the AI. And so maybe it would, and, and I've often theorized about this as well. Mm -hmm. I think that that could help negotiations. I really do because I think the AI would be able to filter out the emotion and let's be real. Like no matter how good you think you're presenting the problem or the situation, AI could probably help. Oh, <laughs> and so, no doubt. yeah. So I think this is interesting. Although this is trying to completely cut out the buyer's agent, mm. they're saying use joy and we will rebate you any commissions. So they're giving that money back to the buyer and they're trying to create an ecosystem where AI can facilitate the real estate transactions from the buyer so, side. So how does that work? You, you call Joy and you say, hey, Joy, I want to make an offer on this property. Yep. And Joy calls the listing agent and says, hey, do you have any offers? And if they say no, then Joy writes you a contract. 
I don't think that's exactly how it works. <laughs> but I'm just trying to it, com- how many shows have you had, Joy? <laughs> so yeah, you submit through you. You basically communicate with the AI, and then they they say they have a team of humans that review all offers and all all things before they go through. So you've got like AI that's starting it, and a human that's there to intervene if necessary. Hmm. I don't know. It's really interesting, guys. I think that we're going to see a lot more AI. The yeah. market cap for AI. So, like, I was watching um, software as a service, like, represents, like, a, a certain percent of a market cap. The market cap for AI software of a, oh, as man. a service is going to completely, like, it's more than the GDP of China and India together. Like, it's, it's massive. Be, yeah. Like, AI is going to absolutely transform everything every single industry and if we don't think that it's coming for real estate we are we are totally mistaken and i and i know that like companies have spent billions of dollars trying to get rid of the realtor i mean zillow tried they failed open door tried they failed this is another chris smithism he delineated all of this out very well when it comes to these important purchases people do want a human involved however i do think that there's something that we're just not talking about in real estate and that is the younger generations like i'm telling Mm. you like when my daughter goes to buy and sell houses she's not going to want to talk to anybody she's going to want to do it all from her phone and she's going to be very internet empowered and she's going to think that she knows everything and she'll probably make a lot of mistakes but that's just the reality of it and i could completely see the younger generation foregoing that realtor Mm. maybe using ai counsel and you know transacting digitally on their own like i see it happening i wonder if there's going to be some type of ai that uploads that home inspection like we were just talking about like where you can actually you know upload the home inspection it'll synthesize it for you break down yeah joy does it yeah, mm-hmm. like that's I the easiest that. thing ever. Yep. I mean, we know that. We've, I can see that. We've trained bots by uploading yep. documentation. It's like, it's so easy. It's, a, like, it's, it's actually kind of oddly easy. A kindergartner could do it. <laughs> yeah. and there's no coding yes. necessary. Um, you know, you, so yeah, it's going to transform things. It's, it's interesting too, because like we keep talking about the NAR settlement and what's going on with commissions. And perhaps the actual real important topic is how is AI going to transform real estate? Because it will. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And in breaking news. And the shrieking numbers. <laughs> so CoStar just acquired Matterport for mm. over a billion dollars. Just a billion? Like $1.6 billion. Well, that's a little bit more than a billion. <laughs> it said yeah, over. That's a, that's a whole other half billion for one and a half I billion. I think that is the number. Uh, so that is a big, yeah, $1.6 billion. That's a big move. That is a big move. That's $1,600 million, guys. You don't know. Yeah. So, so <laughs> do we think this is their flex towards uh, Zillow's uh, 3D tour? Well, they're going to want people to be on homes.com. I mean, this co-star did, but co-star owns homes.com. So, right. They, the, right. I mean, they're going to definitely have Matterports on probably all their properties. Or they'll probably have something similar to what Zillow does. You can buy you can buy your your Zillow uh, 3D tour, and it just goes right on to Zillow. And I think they prioritize the listing too when you buy a Zillow um, 3D the tour. 3D tour, yeah. Yeah, they absolutely do. They give you premium placement. They allow your picture and your information to be displayed on it. And I gotta be real, the Zillow 3D tour is awesome like if you're not doing that on your listings i think you're missing out it's really cool well this 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 acquisition with 3d matterport they could hit it with homes.com and they could also hit it on the in the commercial sector too right through, yeah, through CoStar. Already, yeah well yes. that's the when the release came out it did seem more commercially focused and mm. i don't know if they're just like trying to bury the lead there to not like freak out the industry <laughs> or the the residential industry but they also don't they own apartments.com too so they could yeah, they could use absolutely. it on yep let's just 3d scan everything like uh, that's Andy Florence he, he said that the other day he's like you know what let's just 3d scan it all let's buy it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense it does make sense i mean it definitely makes sense you know another weird thought in this too is i mean think about the involvement of this i mean cuz getting it all scanned in at one point is obviously going to be a massive undertaking with the commercial buildings etc but think about what the ai is going to do with that once it's uploaded it's going to have a digital view of the united states completely it's pretty it's yeah, yeah that would be really cool pretty like interesting. you got like if you you know you got on the google maps you know and you could like 
drill into something. Oh my yes. And then all of a sudden you're able to drill right into the actual 3D space. That would be cool. Like, yeah, you like really zoom cool. back in and you'd be like, this, this, <laughs> this. And all of a sudden you're like inside the house. Yep. Yeah. That would be insane. I think I, a lot of people won't want to have their houses on there, but, or maybe, I don't know. Well, Matterport had definitely had some legal troubles uh, in regards to privacy. So that's definitely been a thing. Hmm. And there are people that are really concerned about privacy. I was trolling some of the comments, and there were a lot of realtors that were saying that they don't use 3D scans because of privacy. And I'm like going like, how is it any different than your photos? But okay, yeah, like, right. I mean, everybody has That's a different... Weird. Well, because, you know, you, you know, there's... You can look at the floor plan and go, okay, we're going to break in here. Oh, my God, you're don't gonna, say that. You're going to, like, divert the people this way, and we're going to... I'm going to go this way, and I'll steal the, the gold. Oh, my goodness. The gold here, and, you know... <laughs> yeah, I know, but... It's scary, but <laughs> we don't there, need there's a, a little validity to that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's what they're talking about. Because when you have when you have photos, you don't know where things are. You know, you're like, okay, here's this, here's that. But when you have a floor plan, and you're like, okay, here's an opening right here, here's openings right here. You know, you you could divert. Yeah. You know, but any criminal to me that that is going to go that far, getting a, a floor plan, whether it be a build, a new build, or you going back in county records in some form, if if you want to crack that nut, most of the time you can. Sure, but when you have like it makes it a little bit video easier view yeah. of 3D scans. I think it'd probably be a little bit easier for, for professional, yeah, crime or criminals. Criminals, criminals. yes, criminals, criminals. <laughs> <laughs> crime. I was going to say crime people, but there's a interesting though because CoStar or Homes.com set out to spend a billion dollars on residential this year. And now they're <laughs> acquiring Matterport. Like, is this just portal portal wars? <laughs> I think the portal wars is a, is a it's a real real thing because if you look at what's gone on with Zillow and the eyeballs, Realtor.com, Redfin, right? Like Redfin was one of the fastest ones as soon as NAR came out. They came out and was like, basically, hey, you can display your compensation on our on our site, right? Mm -hmm. So they're trying to solve or or be the market of the moment, right? There's all kinds of things going on or. You know, um, you know, Boomtown had their had their little breach, their their data breach, right, where everything shut down. And I know some of the other CRMs were throwing shade real fast. Hey, we'll 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 uh, come over to us and we'll give you a discount and move your people over while that that was going on. And they circulated it at mass. I'm not going to mention their name, but there's a couple of them that, that I know for a fact did that, throwing shade at at Boomtown. And that's what I'm just saying. I, I realize Boomtown's not not the homes.com and, and Zillow, but they're still a behemoth in the space. And dog eat dog world. Meanwhile, interest rates are <laughs> at seven and a half oh. percent, and we be inventory still low. Don't see signs of. So I had a client call me, and they're like, they're like, interest rates are high. It's a good time to buy. I'm, I want to buy. I want to buy right now. Is it? And she's like. She thinks that this is the best time to buy right now because I'm, I'm going to get a great Good deal. Price. I'm going to I'm going to negotiate something. <laughs> I, I, um, and in a year or two, I'll just refinance. Yeah. But which I mean, I mean, it could historically yeah. that, that that's a decent historically thought. It's a good thought. Yeah. But we don't know how how long the interest rates are going to be um, high like this. And we and I mean, there's a lot of people that say that, you know, interest rates are going to go down to like three percent anymore it may go down to yeah. like five and a half or something, i mean but. right like we're not gonna go to three <laughs> yeah if, it's not gonna be like what it was if we went to three there would have to be some oh serious stuff happening in the world oh right gosh, yes. world war three maybe <laughs> some something that that's it's already all just the spots already the, the, the pot's already brewing right now yeah interesting times for sure um you know, we want to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for listening. And you guys have been throwing us a lot of great comments, um, so much so that, that Colby can't keep up with them all. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the list and there's like a ton of comments. So if you have anything to add to the conversation, please do. We love to hear from you. And yeah, and we'd love to chop it up, whatever you've got going on that you want to share with us. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell. Thank you for watching.